But we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you all esteem for this day. So teach us your proverbial lessons for this life. That we may live them wisely and in a way that draws all men unto you, Father. Because Proverbs touches on every area of our life, it is a favorite book of believers. It is not only relevant to life, but also shows that Yahuwah is interested in every area of our life. Proverbs are proverbs, which describes positive actions, showing us how to live. The overall lesson of the book of Proverbs is that wisdom comes from Yahuwah's Ruach HaKodesh. The purpose of the book of Proverbs is clearly to show the reader how to live life wisely and skillfully. As a matter of fact, the entire structure of the book is arranged to carry out this purpose. In the introductions, 1 verse 1 through 7, we see it's the title, the purpose, the motto of the book are clearly spelled out. Beginning in verse 1, 8, there are 10 consecutive exhortations, each beginning with the words, my son. In this series of exhortations, the father sets before the son revelation of the two ways, the way of wisdom and the way of folly. See, these passages do not contain individual proverbs, but consist of brief, logical argued, logically argued, formally and systematically serving to entice the son's appetite to apply the actual proverbs. 10 verse 1. See, in Proverbs 10, 1 through 22, verse 6, there are 375 Proverbs of Solomon, each of which represents in some way the choice to be made between wisdom and folly. The remaining 284 verses are divided among several authors, but they likewise carry on the same theme. There is an ordered flow of thought in the first nine chapters of the book. The best way to study the latter section of is by topic. See, a simple reading or examining of the subjects covered leaves the distinct impression that wisdom is a prerequisite to skillfully dealing with every area of life. Indeed, this is the very aim of the authors. These topics include family and death, life, discretion, eating, enemies, the fear of Yahuwah, the fool, friendships, the heart or mind, the home, the king, knowledge, labor, Torah, lazy people, love, neighbors, shalom, poverty, prayer, pride, riches, righteousness, sex, shame, sin, sleep, soul, spirit, the tongue, trust, the wicked, wine, wisdom, woman, and words. If one instills into his life the moral disciplines commanded in one through nine, the masters, and masters the, the, the practical application of wisdom expressed in 10 through 31, he will truly have an abundant and successful life. So let's take a look at this word, Proverbs, in, in the pictograph. Mashal. Spelt with the mem, a sheen, and a lamed. Of course, we know the mem represents chaos, a mighty, even blood. The sheen means sharp, pressed, eat, to consume, destroy, change, and return. And lamed, it's a staff, it's a representing of a staff, a goat, to control, to teach, to yoke, towards, and to bind. So, mashal is mighty change towards. So Proverbs is a translation of the Hebrew word mashal, the Strong's 4912, meaning to represent, to be like. So mashal in some original sense of superiority and mental action, properly apithia, maximum, usually of metaphorical nature, hence a, a smile as an adage, a poem, a discourse even, by word, like, comparison, a parable, proverb. You see that even a parable, it's, it's lined up with the parable which we know that Yahushua spoke. 
So this, this word proverb even can be called a parable. Interesting. Typically, it's a, a the pithy. It's easy to memorize apathetic saying based on experiences and universal and application. So it's, it's something that's like short, memorable, a memorizable type of life lessons that we can impart into our lives that we can easily remember. But what are the importance of Proverbs? Proverbs accomplishes something that no other scriptural book does. It simply compiles numerous short instructions for living a wise and a prosperous life on earth. Proverbs concerns itself completely with instructing people in the path of wisdom. The writers of the book recognize the varied circumstances of a per person's life and provides principles to apply in a variety of situations rather than instructions to follow in, an only, in only a few specific instances. So this is a life lesson that you're gonna be able to apply when life gives you different obstacles and different situations. We turn to this wisdom that comes from this book and it reveals to us to make the right choices in life. Hallelujah. Proverbs reveals its theme very early in the book. See, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge, according to Proverbs 1 7. The fear of Yahuwah refers to our viewing him and his ways with the respect deserved. It means living our lives in light of what we know of him, holding him in the highest position and depending on him with a humble trust. Only then, Proverbs teaches, will we discover knowledge and wisdom. 9 verse 10. In writing the Proverbs, Solomon hoped that his readers would attain practical righteousness in all things, and that we would do this by living our lives under the authority and the direction of Yahuwah. He specifically explained the book's purpose in one verses two through six, focusing on imparting understanding that would impact every facet of our lives. Much of the book emphasizes about listening to others so that we might learn from them and apply the combined knowledge of those who have gone before us, such as parents and elders, to the unique circumstances of our own lives, one verses five as well as eight. See, wisdom then involves appropriating a measure of humility, first before Yahuwah and then before others. If instead we decide to speak rashly rather than listen attentively, well, Proverbs deals with that too. In 12 verse 15 and 13 verse 3. There's five objectives of Proverbs. Number one, to know wisdom and instruction. Number two, to perceive words of understanding. Three, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, so that we know what is right or righteous. Number four, to give subtle, simple knowledge and discretion to a young person. And number five, to deeply understand the words of the wise. The call of wisdom. See, wisdom comes from Yahuwah. But we have to seek it out, according to Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 12. We should not stop with fearing Yahuwah, but go on through much study to learn more of Yahuwah's truth and increase in wisdom. This will help us from making tragic errors in judgment, according to Proverbs 7, verses 6 to 23, and bring abundant baraka, according to Proverbs 8, verse 35. So can we learn from Solomon, who started out seeking wisdom and later turned from the Almighty to serve idols and to experience life apart from the Creator. Solomon was the ideal author of Proverbs because he is an object lesson for us. His failures validate the truths he represents, oddly enough. Wisdom. Hakma. Spelt with a hit, a ka, a mem, and a hay. The hat means to divide or to separate, and the cut means to bend, to open, to allow or tame. The mem, water, mighty blood, and the hay, to look and to reveal. See, the Hebrew noun, chakma, the Strong's 2451, is the Hebrew word for wisdom. 
The word occurs 149 times in the Masoretic text of the Hebrew scripture. The word wisdom is translated from the Hebrew word hakma, meaning wisdom or skill, skillful or wisely or wit, to be or become wise. See, the word denotes the acquisition of a habit of wisdom by experience, by the receiving of instruction, and by the exercising of correct judgment, wise-hearted, if you will. So wisdom is also given as meaning to discern, to perceive, to discern mentally, to understand, to have understanding, to be intelligent, wise, discreet. See, the ability or result of an ability to think and to act utilizing knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight, accumulated knowledge, erudition or enlightenment, soundness of mind. See, Proverbs shows that wisdom begins with a right relationship with Yahuwah, Proverbs 1, verse 7, and 9 through 10. So unless you fear Yahuwah, meaning to revere and respect him in a right relationship, you cannot live an abundant life. Proverbs 1.7, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom. Proverbs 1, verses 20 through 33, wisdom cries out, but a few listen. Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 9, seek wisdom, Yahuwah will give it. Proverbs 2, 10 through 15, wisdom produces discretion, preserves you from the evil man. Proverbs 2, 16 through 19, wisdom delivers you from the strange woman. Proverbs 2, verses 20 through 22, where wisdom leads you to walk in the path of righteousness with other good men. Proverbs 3, verse 21, keep sound wisdom and discretion. Proverbs 3, verse 35, the wise shall inherit glory. Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing with understanding. Proverbs 14, 12, a way seems right to a man, but ends in death. Proverbs 16, 16, wisdom is better than gold, understanding better than silver. Proverbs 16, verse 25, a way seems right to a man, it ends in death. Proverbs 27, 12, a prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. Proverbs 31, 4 through 5, rulers shouldn't drink wine, lest they forget Torah and pervert judgment. Proverbs 9, verses 10, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Kadosh one is insight. Proverbs 5, verses uh, five through, uh, Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, trust in Yahuwah with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Proverbs 129, haters of knowledge don't choose to fear Yahuwah. Proverbs 133, listen to Yahuwah and you will be quiet from fear of evil. Proverbs 2, verses 4, and five, seek wisdom, and you will understand the fear of Yahuwah. Proverbs 3, 6, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Proverbs 3, verse 7, fear of Yahuwah is to depart from evil. Proverbs 3, 24, when you lie down, you shall not be afraid. Proverbs 8, 13, fear Yahuwah is to hate evil. Proverbs 10, 27, fear Yahuwah prolongs your life. Proverbs 14, verses 26 and 27, fear is a fountain of life. So the fear of Yahuwah is a fountain of life. To respect and revere Yahuwah gives you a fountain of life. It flows from you, from him to you, and to you unto others. The theme that has been presented to us is that what he, that living water that flows, it comes to his people. We cannot contain it ourselves or it becomes stagnant. You need to allow that, that fountain of life to flow through you to others so that it brings them life as well. That overflowing abundance of that anointing that's placed upon you needs to be shared. That fountain of life, hallelujah, that we all are seeking. 
Proverbs 15, 16, better a little with fear of Yahuwah than great treasure with trouble. Proverbs 19, 23, fear of Yahuwah tends to life. See, the scoffer is cynical and sarcastic towards Yahuwah's wisdom and can't live rightly because of his attitude. And worse of all, the fool is rejects. He has rejected Yahuwah's wisdom. He lives wickedly and will ultimately suffer the consequences of sin. So be wise and listen to the wisdom of Proverbs. See, wisdom will protect her students, 2 verse 8. Wisdom will direct her students, 3 verses 5 through 6. And wisdom will perfect her students, 4 verse 18. Let's take a look at wise. Wise is a calm, right? A hit means divide or separate. The ka means to bend, to open, to allow and tame. And a mem, that mighty water, blood. So a calm, the strongs 2449, it means to be wise. Or strongs 2450 also means to be wise as well. See, the Hebrew word hakam is related to the idea of separating, as this word means one who is able to separate between what is good and what is evil or bad. See, this one word can be translated as either skill or when applied to a craftsman or as wise when applied to a leader or counselor. And now, send to me a man of skill, hakam, to work in gold. Second Chronicles 2, verse 7. Provide for yourself, wise, or come men in understanding and knowing for your tribes, and I will set them as rulers over you. Deuteronomy 1, 13. Yahuwah spoke these words concerning Bezabeth. And I have filled him with the Ruach of Yahuwah in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge. In all manner of workmanship, according to Exodus 31, 3. See, the word understanding is translated from the Hebrew word tabuna, meaning to separate, to distinguish, hence to discern, to mark, to understand, all which depends on the power of separating, distinguishing, discriminating, specifically to discern, to perceive, to discern mentally, to understand have insight or understanding, discretion, reason, skillfulness, understanding, wisdom. See, the word knowledge is translated from the Hebrew word da'at, meaning cunning knowledge, to perceive, to be sensible of, by sight, by touch, but chiefly in the mind, hence to understand, to observe, to consider, to mark and observe with a purpose. So with each of these three words, there is a crossover of meanings, which they tend to blend into one another. They all have to do with perceiving and discerning in order to act wisely with understanding and in genuine knowledge that glorifies Yahuwah. It is about learning to know what to do with what we know through wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Wise counsel. So you want us to seek and listen to wise counsel in order to make proper decisions. Proverbs 11, 14. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Proverbs 12, 15. He that hearkens to counsel is wise. Proverbs 15, 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. Proverbs 19, verses 20 and 21. Hear counsel and receive wise instruction from Yahuwah. Proverbs 20, 18, every purpose is established by counsel. Proverbs 20, verse 5, counsel is like deep water. It needs to be drawn out. Proverbs 24, verse 6, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 27, 9, hardly counsel rejoices the heart. Proverbs 14, 35, kings favor a wise servant. Proverbs 22, 17, apply your heart to Yahuwah's knowledge, 23, 12. Proverbs 24, 3, 
through wisdom, a house is built. We also see in the Proverbs instructions to children. Proverbs 1, verses 8 through 9, listen to your parents' instruction. Proverbs 1, verses 10 through 19, don't be enticed by sinners. Sin results in misery and death. Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 4, listen to wisdom. Cry out for, seek her as silver. Proverbs 3, verse 1, don't forget Yahuwah's Torah and commandments. Proverbs 3, verses 11 and 12, don't despise Yahuwah's chastening. Proverbs 4, 1, hear children, the instructions of your fathers. Proverbs 10, 1, the wise son makes a glad father. Proverbs 13, 1, a wise son hears his father's instruction. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Proverbs 13, 24, he that spares his rod hates his son. Proverbs 15, 20, a wise son makes a glad father. Proverbs 17, verse 6, grandchildren are the crown of, an old, man, of old men, the glory of children are their fathers. Proverbs 17, 25, a foolish, a foolish son is grief and bitterness to his parents. Proverbs 19, 13, a foolish son is the calamity of his father. Proverbs 19, 18, chasten your son while there is hope. <laughs> Proverbs 19, verses 26 and 27, he that wastes his father, chases away his mother, causes shame and brings reproach. Proverbs 20, verse 7, a just man's children are Baruch or blessed after him. Proverbs 20, 11, even a child is known by his doing. Proverbs 20, 20, whosoever curses his parents, his candle shall be put out. Proverbs 22, verse 6, train up a child in a way he should go, and when he is old, he won't depart from it. Proverbs 22, 15, Foolishness is bound in child's heart, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Proverbs 23, verses 13, 14, withhold not correction. Punishment shall deliver him from the grave. Proverbs 23, 22, listen to your parents. Proverbs 23, verses 24 through 25, parents of wise children shall have joy. Proverbs 29, verses 15 to 17, child left to himself brings his mother to shame. Proverbs 30, 11, a generation that curses father, don't barak mother, don't bless their mother. Proverbs 30, 17, raven shall pick out the eyes that mock its father. Do not envy evil. Proverbs 24, 1, don't envy an evil men. Friend, Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loves at all times. A brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 18, 24, a man that has friends must be friendly. Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron like a man, his friend. Proverbs also discusses fornication and adultery that leads to death. Illicit sex seems enticing but actually it's very dangerous and harmful, leading to death. See, today, many young people feel that they have to live together to get to know each other, to decide if they want to get married. However, marriage is a commitment for life, and you do not learn commitment and faithfulness by being uncommitted and unfaithful. So you don't have to get too far into the book to start to see this reflected. See, intimacy outside of marriage leaves scars that time won't ease. See, faithfulness in marriage also relates directly to faithfulness in all our relationships, and particularly in our relationship with Yahuwah. Proverbs 2, verses 16 and 19, a strange woman leads to death. Proverbs 5, verses 3 to 21, lips of a strange woman are like honeycomb, but the end of dallying with her is like a wormwood. 
Proverbs 6, verses 24 through 35, can a man take fire into his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Proverbs 7, verses 5 through 27, the harlot's house is the way, to, way of death. Proverbs 22, 14, mouth of strange woman is a deep pit. Proverbs 23, verses 27, 28, a whore is a deep ditch lying in wait for her prey. Proverbs 29, 3, he that keeps company with harlots spends his father's substance. Proverbs 30, verse 20, adulterous woman says, I have done no wickedness. Authority is also discussed in Proverbs 29, 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Proverbs 29, 4, a wise king establishes the land, but bribery overthrows it. Proverbs 29, 12, if a ruler listens to lies, all his servants are wicked. Proverbs 29, 14, if a king faithfully judges poor, his throne will be established forever. Joyfulness. Proverbs 15, 13, a joyful heart makes a cheerful countenance. Proverbs 15, 15, a joyful heart has a continual feast. Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart does good like medicine. A broken spirit or ruach dries the bones. Keeping the Torah is the basis for wisdom. According to Proverbs 28, 7, whosoever keeps the Torah is a wise son. Proverbs 28, 9, whoever, whoso, whoever turns his ear away from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Proverbs 29, 18, with no vision, the people perish. Baruch is he who keeps the Torah. And liars beware. Proverbs 12, 19, the lips of truth shall be established forever. Proverbs 12, 22, lying lips are abomination to Yahuwah. Proverbs 19, verses 5 through 9, a false witness shall not be unpunished. Proverbs 21, 6, getting treasures by a lying tongue is vanity. See a lot of that in this world today, don't we? Control your anger. Proverbs 16, 32, one slow to anger is better than the mighty. Rule your ruach, rule your spirit. Proverbs 19, 11, it is prudent to defer anger, a glory to pass over a transgression. Proverbs 19, 19, a man of great wrath shall suffer punishment. Proverbs 22, verses 24 and 25, make no friendship with an angry man. Correction is necessary. Proverbs 9, verses 7 through 9. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Proverbs 10, 17. Be in the way of life. Keep instruction. Proverbs 15, 10. Correction is grievous to him that forsakes the way. He that hates reproof shall die. Proverbs 15, 31. The ear that hears the reproof of life lives among the wise. And never give up. Proverbs 24, verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Proverbs 24, 16. A just man falls seven times and rises again. Never give up. Never quit. The Baraka of Yahuwah, according to Proverbs 10, 22. The Baraka of Yahuwah makes rich without sorrow. Proverbs 11, 4, riches don't profit in the day of wrath. Proverbs eleven twenty five: liberal soul shall be made fat. Proverbs eleven twenty eight: he that trusts in his riches shall fall. Proverbs 13, 7, some make themselves rich, but have nothing. Others make themselves poor, yet have great riches. Proverbs 13, 11, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. Proverbs 16, 8. A little with righteousness better than great revenues without righteousness. Proverbs 17, 5. Whosoever mocks the poor reproaches his maker. Hmm. Proverbs 19, 4. Wealth makes many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. 
Proverbs 19, verses 6 and 7, the poor don't have friends. Everyone is a friend to him that gives gifts. Proverbs 19, 17, he that pities the poor lends to Yahuwah, he will repay. Proverbs 21, 13, whosoever stops his ear at the cry of the poor shall cry, but not be heard. Proverbs 22, 1, a good name is better than great riches. Proverbs 22, 7, the rich rule over the poor, bower is servant to lender. Proverbs 22, 16, both the oppressor of poor and the giver to the rich shall come to want. Proverbs 22, 22, rob not the poor, neither oppress the afflicted. Proverbs 23, verses 4 through 5, labor not to rich, for riches fly away like an eagle. Proverbs 28, verses 27, he that gives to the poor shall not lack. Proverbs 29, 7, the righteous consider the, the cause of the poor. Proverbs 30, verses 7 through 9, give me neither poverty nor riches. Proverbs 31, verse 9, plead for the cause of the poor and needy. A virtuous, good wife is from Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Proverbs eleven twenty two: a fair woman without discretion is like a jewel in a swine's snout. Proverbs 12, 4, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Proverbs 14, verse 1, a wise woman builds her house, a foolish one plucks it down. Proverbs 18, 22, a good wife is from Yahuwah. Proverbs 19, 23, the contentions of a wife are like a continual rain dropping. Proverbs 19, 14, a prudent wife is from Yahuwah. Proverbs 21.9, better to dwell in an attic than in a big house with a brawling woman. Proverbs 21.19, better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Proverbs 25.24, better to live in an attic than in a wild house with a brawling woman. Proverbs 27.15, unceasing raindrops in a contentious woman are alike. Proverbs 30, 19, a wonderful thing, a way of a man with a maid. Proverbs 30, 23, earth cannot bear an odious woman when she is married. And Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31, description of a virtuous woman is made here. Those men of Yahuwah, these are the women that you should be seeking after. This is the type of woman that you should desire. The one that is from Yahuwah, a virtuous woman, according to Proverbs 31. Hallelujah. Humility. Proverbs 11.2. Pride comes with shame. Humility comes with wisdom. Proverbs 15.33. Before honor is humility. Proverbs 16, verses 18.19. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 22, 4, by humility and fear of Yahuwah are riches, honor, and life. Proverbs 26, verse 12, a man wise in his own conceit is worse than a fool. Proverbs 29, 23, pride brings a man low. Humility produces honor. Proverbs 30, verse 13, a generation with lofty eyes. Giving is also discussed in Proverbs 3, verses 9 through 10, where it says, Honor Yahuwah with your substance, and he will brought you. Proverbs eleven twenty four. 24, Give much. You increase, give little, and you become poor. A fool. Proverbs often presents a contrast between the righteous way and the unrighteous way, the wise and the fools. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother, Proverbs 15, 20. So sometimes Proverbs parallel similar concepts, Proverbs 19, 13. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. 
So the two major themes which are interwoven and overlapping throughout Proverbs are wisdom and folly. Wisdom, which includes knowledge, understanding, instruction, discretion, and obedience, is built on the fear of Yahuwah and the word of Yahuwah. But folly is everything opposite to wisdom. There's four kinds of fools mentioned in Proverbs. The simple fool, the hardened fool, the arrogant fool, and the brutish fool. So when you are confronted with foolish people, we need discernment as to how and if to answer that person. Listen to the words of the wise. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. Proverbs 1, 7. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1, Fools hate knowledge. Proverbs 1, Fools, prosperity shall destroy them. Proverbs 3.35, shame is the promotion of fools. Proverbs 14.7, go from the presence of a foolish man. Proverbs 14.9, fools make a mock at sin. Proverbs 26, verses 4 through 5, answer a fool, don't answer a fool according to his folly. Proverbs 28.26, he that trusts in his own heart is a fool. And you got to control your tongue. And you get to control your life through controlling your tongue. Proverbs 10, 11, the mouth of the righteous is a well of life. Proverbs 10, 18 through 21, in multitude of words, there is sin. Proverbs 10, 31, the mouth of righteous brings forth wisdom. Proverbs 11, 9, a hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. Proverbs 11.13, a talebearer reveals secrets. Proverbs 12.13, the wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his lips. Proverbs 12, verses 14, a man shall be satisfied with good by fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 12.18, the tongue of wise is wealth. Proverbs 13, verses 2 and 3, he that keeps his mouth keeps his life. Proverbs 15, verses 1 through 2, a soft answer turns away wrath. Proverbs 15, verse 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Proverbs 15, 28, the righteous study to answer, but the wicked, pour, or the wicked mouth pours out evil. Proverbs 16, 24, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, health to the bones. Proverbs 16, verses 27, 28, an ungodly man digs up evil. His lips are burning fire. A whisper separates friends. Proverbs 17, verses 27, 28, spare your words. Even a fool holds his peace and is counted wise. In other words, a closed mouth gathers no flies. Proverbs 18, verses 4 through 8, a fool's mouth is his destruction. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. Proverbs 18, 13, it is a shame to answer a matter before you hear it. Proverbs 18, verses 19 through 21, a brother offended is harder to be won back than a strong city. Death and life are in the tongue. Proverbs 20, 19, meddle not with flatterers. Proverbs 21, 23, Whosoever keeps his tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Proverbs 25, 11, a word uh, filthy spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Proverbs 26, 20, strife ceases when there is no talebearer. Proverbs 26, 22, a talebearer's words are like wounds. Proverbs 26, verses 23 through 28, a flattering tongue works ruin. Proverbs 27, 5, open rebuke is better than secret love. Proverbs 28, 23, rebuke is better than flattery. Proverbs 29, 11, the fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keeps it until later. Proverbs 29, 20, 
A man hasty in words is worse than a fool. Proverbs even discusses honest business. Proverbs 11.1, 1, a false balance is an abomination to Yahuwah. Proverbs 20, verse 10 through 23, diverse weights are an abomination to Yahuwah. And perverse weights are an abomination. He's telling you if you do not give what is right, what, what is owed, and you try to cheat somebody, guess what? It's an abomination. I don't know if much of us think about that. But that is saying something very strong about our actions, about what we do when we give somebody something that they have paid for, possibly. Do things right. We won't have to deal with being an abomination to Yahuwah. Proverbs 2014, the buyer degrades product to get a good deal, then boast of his gain. Drunkenness leads to sorrow, according to Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink, raging. Proverbs 21, 17. He that loves wine and oil shall not be rich. Proverbs 20, verse, or I'm sorry, Proverbs 23, verses 20 and 21. Be not among wine bibbers or gluttons. Both shall come to poverty. Proverbs 23, verses 29 through 35. Drunkenness leads to sorrow, contentions, and babbling. Proverbs 31, verses 6 through 7, strong drink, or give strong drink to those ready to perish. Work is also discussed in Proverbs 10, verses 4 through 5. He becomes poor that deals with a, lack, a slack hand, but the diligent shall be rich. Proverbs 10, 26, the sluggard is like smoke in the eyes. Proverbs 12, 11, he that tills his land shall be satisfied with bread. Proverbs 12, 24, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Proverbs 13, 4, the soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor, there is profit, but talk of lips tends to penury. Proverbs 15, 19. The way of slothful man is as a hedge of thorns. Proverbs 19, 15. An idle soul shall suffer hunger. Proverbs 19, 24. The slothful man won't work. Proverbs 20, verse 4, sluggards won't plow because of winter and shall beg in harvest. Proverbs 20, 13, love not sleep lest you come, lest you come to poverty. Proverbs 21, verses 25 and 26, the desire of the slothful kills him, for he refuses to work. Proverbs 22, 13, a slothful man says there is a lion without as an excuse for not working. Proverbs 22, 19, he, a diligent man, he shall stand before kings. Proverbs 24, verses 30 through 34, poverty comes to the slothful. Proverbs 26, verse 13, 16, the lazy stick to their bed like a door to its hinges. Proverbs 28, 19, he that tills his land shall have plenty of bread. Honey is even discussed. And Proverbs 24, 13 says, eat honey and honeycomb because it is good. But Proverbs 25, verses 16 and 27 says, do not eat too much honey. Don't boast. And I got a little proverbial nuggets for you this morning. Proverbs 25, verses 21, 22, give your enemy food and water and heap coals of fire on his head. Proverbs 27, 21, know the state of your flocks. Proverbs 28, 13, he that covers his sins shall not prosper. Proverbs 1, verses 24 through 28, the terrible price of rejecting wisdom. Solomon came to the throne with great promise, privilege, and opportunity. Yahuwah had granted his request for understanding in 1 Kings 3, verses 9 through 12, and 2 Chronicles 1, verses 10, 12. 
and his wisdom exceeded all others, according to 1 King 4, verses 29 through 31. However, the shocking reality is that he failed to live out the truth that he knew and even taught his son Rehoboam in 1 Kings 11, verses 1 through 4, and 6, verses 7 through 11, who subsequently rejected his father's teaching in 1 Kings 12, verses 6 to 11. See, Proverbs brings us to a level of practical righteousness, 1 verse 3, by addressing man's ethical choices, calling into question how he thinks, lives, and manages his daily life in light of divine truth. More specifically, Proverbs calls man to live as the Creator intended him to live when he made man, according to Psalms 90, verses 1, 12, uh, 1 through 2, as well as 12. But the reoccurring promise of Proverbs is that generally the wise and the righteous who obey Yahuwah live longer, 9 verse 11. They prosper, 2 verses 20 and 22, experience joy in 3 verses 13 and 18, and the goodness of Yahuwah's temporary, 12 verse 21, while fools suffer shame in 3 verse 35 and death in 10 21. But on the other hand, it must be remembered that this general principle is balanced by the reality that the wicked sometimes prosper, according to Psalm 73, verses 3 and 12, though only temporarily, according to Psalm 73, verses 17 and 19. Job illustrates that there are occasions when the righteous wise are struck with disaster and suffering. So how do we apply this? Read it, then live it. See, Proverbs contains some of the most applicable nuggets of truth in all of Scripture. This approach allows us to see very clearly how any particular proverb might be applied to any number of everyday situations that we encounter, from getting out of bed in the morning to building a strong foundation in our relationships with others. See, Proverbs reminds us that Yahuwah concerns himself not just with the big cataclysmic uh, events of life, but even those mundane, invisible moments in our lives as well. So get wisdom, get insight, don't forget, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. See, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, and whatever you get, get insight. Prize her in highly, and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her, Proverbs 4, verses 5 as well as seven and eight. See, Pro, uh, the book of Proverbs is full of great tips and advice, and wisdom is praised more than everything else, more than a hundred times. See, there's so much to be learned from what we are reading here and what we are gaining understanding to that we have to understand how to put it into our lives, how to put it into our practical use so that we can benefit from it. If it is going to reveal these things so many times to us that it, we have to take notice. So let's enjoy and learn from Solomon's great volume of wisdom. Proverbs deals with various aspects of human experience and guides us in the way of righteous living. See, the book of Proverbs also encourages us to seek after wisdom while also telling us where that wisdom can be found. This wisdom must be sought like buried treasure. It almost must be viewed as a precious jewel. We must seek after it diligently and not let it go, uh, and then not let go of it for all of our days. We need to continue to, to hold on to this because it is a treasure. It is a jewel that Yahuwah has placed before us. See, the truth is, true wisdom always begins with Yahuwah. Ultimately, the book teaches that wisdom can be found, but only by those who search for it diligently. So our go we going forward are going to continue to seek after this diligently because this is a very great treasure that has been placed before us to go and to pursue and to find and to put into our daily lives so that it gets us where we need to go in this life so that we walk that path in an appropriate way. This book and these things, these little tre treasures that are contained within it will keep us on that path of righteousness all the days of our lives. Hallelujah.
But Father, we thank you. We thank you for your pro your proverbs this morning. We thank you for your word that, that teaches us and that shows us and that reveals to us the best way to live this life so that we can avoid the snares that are contained within them. We can avoid the heartaches that are contained in this evil world. If we will just listen to your words of advice that are written in this book, they will save us so much heartache and lead us to so much joy and happiness in you. So thank you for this Shabbat. Thank you for this study. Thank you for what's about to come forth as we continue in this discussion. Let your will be done, Father. Let your will be done, we pray in your name, through Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Torah, Rabbi Yahuwah. All right, Brother Rod. Proverbial lessons of life we have learned this morning. What's your thoughts, Brother Shabbat Shalom, by the way? Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Great, great job, brother. Um, great job in the way you formatted <clears throat> um, revealing, you know, what the Proverbs were. I, I really enjoyed how you systematically broke down Proverbs. Um, you know, the other day I was uh, listening, overhearing um, my wife and uh, Darius having a conversation. We have a, a rose bush out in front of our house. And, um, you know, occasionally we'll cut some, and put them in a vase and bring them in. And um, I think my wife did it one day the week before and Darius wanted to know what, why they, they die so quickly. And she said, because they've been disconnected from the life source. You know, and as I was listening to your message, I was reminded of one of the great things um, in, in following Torah, keeping Torah, we call it keeping Torah, following Torah, Torah keepers, because previously we didn't. Um, that, that is the life source. It is the word of Yah, it is Yahushua, um, is the life source and everything connected to it prospers, everything connected from it perishes. So I, I thought that the core of your message, um, you know, cause we can we can go through all of the Proverbs and, and, and clearly, you know, when you look through scripture, you know, there are deep thoughts um, that, that come from some of the passages that are hard to understand that we need to, you know, really dig into and understand understanding the threads throughout scripture, understanding prophecy, all of those things. But the simplicity of scripture <laughs> literally is very simple. Um, and I thought that the core of your message said that when you said Proverbs um, uh, offers wisdom and it offers folly. Wisdom, Torah, folly, Torah, lessness, right? So everything in scripture is instruction based upon following Torah or the destruction of those that don't, where salvation comes from. And that's all of scripture. That's everything. When you look at, you know, the Brit Hadashah and, and everything that they're saying, they're quoting, they're remembering Torah, prophets and the writings. They're explaining Torah, prophets, and the writings. It is being revealed in the, in the Brit, Torah, prophet, and the writings. So to disconnect them from the life source, make it something new, is not advisable. It's not advised. You know, so we have to continue to understand Psalms 1 starts off with, with saying that when you are connected to the life source, you prosper. When you don't, you wither away, blow in the wind. Um, Proverbs expounds on that. You know, people pay thousands and thousands of dollars to, to go to these seminars and, you know, 
um, I guess they turned into webinars now um, where they're getting all of this financial and business advice. And then you come to find out these Fortune 500 companies are applying principles from Proverbs that you could have gotten for $25, you know, in, in, in a Bible study or two, right? So everything for life is contained here. And I thought specifically the last two weeks as you went through the Psalms and you went through the Proverbs, um, that, that's that been illuminated. And I think that we have to view all scripture that way as being connected to the life source. There's, there's something that's being explained, instructed to do based upon following Torah. There's something that's being warned against and demonstrated the folly of by not following what's in Torah. That's the simplicity of scripture um, and where our salvation and strength comes from. So um, ever more present in the message that you brought today. And I thought I thought that all of those things connected um, in what I saw today. Um, so, so great, again, great job. Um, and I really liked the way you broke down the different categories you know um, but the simplicity of them is that they're torah wisdom folly torlessness so praise you hallelujah well great breakdown great great analysis uh encapsulating you know basically the the gist of what Par, uh, you know what the, what the proverbs mean i found it very interesting though it really keeps sticking coming back to me uh, is the definition of proverbs when you're looking at it in the hebrew it also can mean parable which is exactly what yahushua spoke and maybe maybe this is a reason why people don't always understand the parables because they're in the sense of parable you know being spoken and revealed and what did yahushua say you know, he spoke those for his people. They would understand, you know. <laughs> right, because they're all, they're always relating to Torah, to something that was already written, you know. Understand, I mean, the, you, the parable of the virgins, you know, that, that you would know what to do, that you are following instructions, you know. You know, one of the, one of the biggest mistakes I think we, we make, not specifically us, our group, but I'm just saying, believers in general, is this this idea of evangelism is to go out and tell people what they're doing wrong. But that's not that's not even that's not that's never been the view. You know, Yahushua, you know, sat in the midst of Matthew and all of his, you know, sinners. Not necessarily to tell them what they're doing was wrong, but to show them what was right because what they were doing was customary, was ordinary because they were outside and connect, disconnected from the life source. He's showing them what the life source is. You know, even if, you know, you illuminate by your life, you know, even though the person may think that what they're doing is right, it's illuminated the differences of what is right and what is wrong. It's illuminated the folly in what you're doing, the vain, you know, um, you know, chasing of money and, you know, these trinkets we're getting and all of these things mean nothing outside of Torah. It doesn't say that the things are bad. It says the pursuit of them and them alone for some vain idea of vain um, uh, showing uh, is, 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 is wrong, is off, you know, and the pursuit of wisdom, you know, the connection to, to, to work, you know, to tilling the ground, to, to all these things and the riches, not just in money, but the riches in, in, in the Ruach um, that provide you, you know, all of these things. And the, the, the problem is, you know, we don't have to tell people what they're doing. Wrong. Because Yah says, if you follow me, this is how you live. He goes so far as to say, all of the people that don't follow me, all these other nations, this is what they do and warns up those that want to follow him not to do those things. You know, you know, walking around with signs, you know, you know, at abortion clinics or 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 to homosexuality. Like 
They don't hear it because they're not following Torah. These instructions are for you that believe in me. You do these things, and by you doing them, by you exhibiting these things, that the people that are of the nations will see you as light, and everything that is dark in them will be exposed, and they will see it for what it is. So I think, you know, when it comes to evangelism, we have to pay attention to what Torah tells us to do um, and not to do. Um, and we become the illumination of him to the world, right? So just wanted to throw that in because I, I think that, you know, sometimes, and I say we, I don't mean us personally. I mean, in general, the overall message to the world is kind of skewed and is why so many are lost because they're not understanding um, how the message should be brought forth, so. Right. Well, you yeah, know, I mean, what you're saying is actually in the same realm of what the meaning of, of the actual word Proverbs is, which it, it, again, it takes us back to representing or being like him, you know, being, being in the same moral sense as him. That's what Proverbs is. So if you understand what, a, what the Proverbs actually is, it's telling you this is how you get to be like him. I don't know if I, if anybody's ever put that equation in the, into their thoughts, because maybe that'll help us because usually when we think about Proverbs, you know, we think about wisdom, how we should ought to live the things we should and shouldn't do. But in this sense, it takes on a deeper meaning when we understand that this book is put into place as an example of how we are to represent him, how are we supposed to be like him? You know, I, that, that excites me because I've never seen these things before. And, and it's like, it's like a blanket uh, that's this, this, you know, it snuggles you in and makes you feel all comfy and warm and stuff, you know, because you see that he's giving you examples that I never seen in the, in the Tanakh before as examples in that sense. I, I mean, you know, that's how you're supposed to live. But what I'm saying is like this book here has given us practical ways to live our lives that, that come into alignment with his ways, you know, and it, and, it, and it helps us to walk properly. It tells us the, the pitfalls to avoid in this life because it outlines them for us so we can start to see them. When we see ourselves in that situation, you're going to think of this study next time when you get in that situation, you're going to think, uh-oh, what does is, what is the Proverbs tell me how to handle this situation when you're dealing with a fool, you know? I mean, those type of things, you know? I just, I don't know, it just, it just changed my whole I think I guess thought process on this book, you know. You got something? I just wanted to add one thing because I, I mentioned abortion clinics. I want to want to be clear. You know, we are to fight for life. You know, we are to fight and protect those um, um, and their lives. But you know, you know, we don't. You know, we don't bomb. You know, and kill other people to prove a point. You know, we don't. There's certain things that 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 are disconnected from the character of Yah. You know, um, but we are to fight for the living, you know. So just wanted to make that clear. Thank you for that clarification. Hallelujah. Brother Jadiel, are you with us? Shabbat Shalom. Are you there, brother? I think you're a uh, major co host, I believe, already. All right, well, I'll give you a couple minutes. Brother JP. Shabbat Shalom. I know you've been up early this morning, so you've been digging in already. <laughs> uh, Shabbat Shalom, Mishvaka. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, Yahuwah. Woke us up really early this morning. So, <laughs> oh man, yeah. Nah, it's just, it's been a blessed day. It's been a blessed day. Uh, slowly getting things going. Um, I, I want, you know, I, I like how you, you formatted it. Like the brother Rod said, you know, it's definitely important um, to do it that way so that sometimes it's good to get a breakdown that way instead of, you know, reading it, you know, I mean, an out, it's like having an outline, you know, you can kind of get a gist of, of an area and then you can go to it and seek advice. Um, like you said, you know, the, the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, um, Psalms, even Job can be looked at as wisdom, and 
I always think about that. Like, where do you, you know, some people say, oh, I go to the word when I, when I need to seek advice or if I'm having a bad day and I'm like, I don't know how they do that. You know, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. Like if people have a methodology to do that, like some type of method and they just, they go and do a certain thing. Cause like, I, I think prayer for me is, has been more like, I just go and speak to you who about it. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I want to read something though. Like, I'm like, how, what do I read? Like, you know, when I'm stressed out or I'm, I'm, you know, frustrated or, or something like, and, and I feel like, where do I go? So um, having uh, like that kind of a breakdown, you know, helps in that way. Cause then you could say, Oh, if I'm anxious or if I'm, um, you know, like you had, you had a couple different things listed. Now, if you're feeling those ways, or if you want to hear something in that area that you may need at that moment. So I like that. I like, I like having that with the Proverbs and the Psalms. Um, it's very important. Uh, there was the Proverbs 28 really is the one that sticks out to me um, for the two reasons that he says in verse seven, whoso keeps the law or the Torah is a wise son. Um, but he that is a companion of righteous men, shameless his father. And then the second verse out of there that I want to read, it says, he that turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. And those are heavy. Those are really heavy. Um, I don't know if it, if 28.9 takes it to the sense of, of uh, somebody that doesn't keep the Torah is, you know what I mean? I think it's just the fact that when Yahuwah sends a witness to you and you deny the Torah to them, you know, to that witness and you're like, nah, it's not that no more or whatever, you know, it may be. But I think even those times, you know, you plant seeds, seeds get grow and, and takes time. But it's a very, uh, very deep Proverbs to hear that even it says he that turns his, away his ear from hearing the Torah. Like, wow, like, you know, that, that's so heavy that his prayer is an abomination. So yeah, 28 has been one that I was, every time, like everything in 28, I was so, it could be brought up in my mind. Um, there was one that you had read and I was, I was trying to find it. It said something about a closed mouth and flies. But yeah, maybe I heard it wrong or something. So I'm gonna have to go back and look because I was like, I think it, it is. It sounded good though. It sounded really good. Though. Like if a, if you if your mouth's closed, like flies won't go in it. And you're talking about bad word, like like I don't know if it was like talking about people or or what it was pertaining to, but it, it was pretty deep. But I was like, man, I got. I tried to find it. By the time I looked, it was already. You already had went. I said, all right, I got to go back now and, and seek it out. But, but yeah, no, brother. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. It's, it's a blessing, though. I, I appreciate you breaking down Proverbs and Psalms uh, in these ways. So that way we can kind of go back and, and go and analyze certain areas. Um, and, you know, it can even help to, in like, for instance, if you have some, if you want to make like a you know, paperwork or even a Bible sermon. If somebody wants to do a sermon, they can use the paperwork and then and then play off of it and then and then just keep going, you know. So definitely it's amazing. And so Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I, that was that one caught my attention too about the flies in the mouth, you know. And it brings me back, you know, immediately that thought is like, you know, the Azibab, you know, the Lord of the flies, you know. And going into the mouth is like that that perverse word or speaking or something. I'm that was the first thought. I don't know if that's what it means, but that was my first thought when I when I read that. I was like, that's interesting, you know. Um, but yeah, the abomination, and I and I and, and those that turn away their ears, so they don't want to listen to it. They don't want to hear. They say that it's done away with. I mean, th those are dangerous grounds when you start doing that. We see the scripture even in the Brit Hadashah tells us to be aware of that. You know, that nothing, not you no, know, the, the law, if, if, if everything isn't complete, then it's not done yet. You know, we know that it's not completed. So the Torah or the law, if you want to say, is not done away with. And you're a fool if you think that you are not underneath the, the obligation of, a, of walking according to it turning your ear away from it, guess what? That does to your prayer, you know? 
So you got to get it in your head. And I'm speaking to those that are not walking with us right now that are may stumble on this message, but you got to understand that the scriptures are very clear from the beginning to the end. That is our life source. You know, we can't turn away from it. And if you, if you turn your ear from it, you become a fool because it doesn't have any bearing to you anymore. Just like brother Rod said, it's a whole nother doctrine. If you take away the, the foundation of the, of the Brit, you got a whole nother book. It doesn't have any meaning or no basis to, to anything other than your interpretation. Because they're all referring you back to the Torah, which is telling you do not turn your ear away from it because your prayers will be an abomination. And that's talking to us here too. You know, if we turn away and walk away from this, after knowing this and having this understanding and knowledge, guess what? Your prayers are become will be an abomination now to him. That's, fri that's frightening, man. Because does that mean that he doesn't hear you anymore? What does that mean? You know, what is the, the depths of that? You know, we know that you can repent and turn back, that he will then hear you then. But what you got, what happens when you do that? You got to begin to walk according to the Torah. So it's a vicious cycle, if you will. If you're not walking according and you don't understand it and, and your pastors are telling you it's done away and you're not under it no more, then that man's got a lot of responsibility over his head for keeping people from walking in the truth of the Torah and talking against it. I, I, that's, that's frightening to me. That's scary that they don't even understand the dangers that they're in. So hopefully these type of studies will show us and show them that stumble says that, hey, we got to be careful of what we say out our mouth. I mean, even that was part of this, our words. My goodness, you know, when you start thinking and breaking this all down, we've got a lot of responsibilities as a believer. You know, we got to walk in the right way so that people can see him in us. Because if we're walking in any kind of way like the world is, guess what? We ain't no different. You know, they're not going to learn. They're not going to benefit. They're not going to be led to the truth. They're going to continue to walk in these things that it's their ears that please to them. And you who don't care about that stuff because that's going to destroy you. That's going to cause you to perish in the end. And this, these, these, these the instructions that we're getting here are, are very interesting. When you start looking at the, 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 um, the definitions of what does, what does wisdom really mean? It simply means to discern, to perceive, uh, to perceive something, right? To understand, to be wise about something. Well, you know, we, we kind of disconnect that but it, and, and, and put it into a little box all by itself, but it, it's so much more to us that we have to grasp this and, and it's going to help us in this walk if we will simply pay attention and put these things into practice. You know, everything that we do, have, we have to walk it out or it's useless to us. You know, yeah, you know, then it's never going to change your life. I, and, you know, bro, I just want to add to um, everything you were reading today. It, it, what else it, it did in my and it just the Ruach, you know, in me was like, wow, like it truly mean, you know, the word is really is really interesting because it, it says there's nothing new under the sun. And we take it like we're like, oh, there's nothing new in the sun. And, and sometimes I feel like we throw it around. And, uh, and I, well, I should say for myself, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I say for myself, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing. But then when you read all the words you were reading, I'm like, man, like they were dealing with things since the beginning that we're dealing with today. And and because sometimes I'll, you know, you'll hear people say, oh, well, 2021 it's a new time and then it's like all there's like and you're like no like they were dealing with it then we're still dealing with it now and we're going to continue to deal with it we're going you know it's like you know and so we we just have to be you know cautious and in, in our mind to i guess in that way to to not think that way just to know like this is just what it is so take the instructions that we've been given and and you know chew on them and and eat them, you know, and have them in you. So it, it's just something I was thinking about because I, I know I've said that plenty of times. I'm like, oh, this is nothing new under the sun. None, and you're like, but the reality is like, truly, there's nothing new under the sun. Like, so everything in the scriptures applies, you know, so I just want to share that. But hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on what JP just said as far as like, you know, it's nothing new. Um, 
and I was reading, I was, I forgot what I was studying, but I was reading the uh, Oxford archeological book. And in it, they found some old Egyptian hieroglyphics, right? And they translated it to our young only want to carouse and drink beer. Basically drink, get drunk, carouse and drink, get drunk. Like <laughs> 2021, <laughs> get fit, right? It's nothing new. It's the same cycle over and over again, you know? But yeah, truth. Time to break that cycle, you know? I, uh, you who as people have uh, got to come out from amongst that stuff, you know? And we got to raise our children. That was another area of... Uh, of uh, the proverbs that I never really, <laughs> never really thought. You know, there's instructions to the children in there. There's a lot of instructions in there for them. You know, to 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 grab a hold of, and it just repeats again the uh, the other directions that they're given. You know, I, I didn't. I just. I guess I didn't realize how much was contained in this book. You know, I always seen it as the like the book of wisdom. You know, as a, that was really pretty much how I seen it. You know, and not that I didn't respect it in that way because I, I did I, cher I cherished it and it was all it's always in my prayers you know I'm asking him to give me that wisdom you know without really understanding what I was asking for because I guess in the English terms we don't always grasp the depth of what we're asking for because we see something in in the scriptures and 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 we desire that but we don't understand all that's encompassed in that because we're only getting it at a narrow view through a, uh, an English word that's limited in its, you know, understanding or, or what it means, you know. So I, I was really uh, amazed at what I learned through this study. And uh, it, was, it was something that's going to be, I'm going to have to go back through it again, again and again, you know, to, to kind of digest it. Because this was something that I really haven't had a chance to fully digest myself, you know as I was putting it together, but Brother Jadiel, are you there with us? Shabbat Shalom, brother, if you're there. I think I have you as a co-host, yep. There we go. Shabbat Shalom, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir, good morning. Oh, you guys can hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, yes, I could. <laughs> I think um, Proverbs is, is an amazing book. There's a lot of doctrinal application and understanding in Proverbs. I think um, is very, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, we shouldn't look at it like uh, a book of suggestions. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, like advice, but you don't really have to take part in the advice i think this is this is a book of application how to apply the wisdom of torah the wisdom of the prophets into your life you know so i, I think that uh the way that you pulled it out you know for everybody to take a take a special interest me and my family every once in a while we we take proverbs and we read it throughout the month because you know it has 31 um chapters so we we dissect it and to analyze all the wisdom that he's telling us to apply you know it talks a lot about to children as well <laughs> you know it starts out by saying my son listen to the commandments of your father and things like that you know so we have us and our family our children read it with us so that way we can apply it to our everyday walk like what jp and rob was talking about like the same stuff that they're talking about is so relevant today you know so it's it's not telling us that you can ignore or if it, if it's if you desire to to apply what's written in proverbs it is very much the understanding of how to apply torah in your walk how to apply the righteousness of the law into your lifestyle and um uh, i just wanted to to give that 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 statement shalom shabbat shalom everybody thank you brother yeah, it's awesome that you're able to go through this with your with your children, and I think that this is a a family style book that that everybody in the family needs to study together, and they need to understand how to apply it in their lives. And it's a great lesson for 
the children to gain from you and your and your wife to be able to break that down with them so that they can start to apply it you know and understand what it means they're going to have a great advantage uh going forward to have that understanding in the very beginning of their walk as a child that's that's a great advantage so you know i think that that's why there's so much in here for the children to gain an understanding that is re uh, directing their thoughts and their application on how to how to apply this in their lives so that they can walk it out so that you know you raise a child up in the way they ought to to walk and live guess what they're not going to depart from it according to scripture and i believe that to be true you know if they gain the truth and they have a real relationship and a, a real understanding of what it is you know they're going to fall in love with it and i see that in our children here you know i mean they they have a love for this like we do and so it really does inspire me, you know, as I read these things that are directed towards the children to really take a, a deeper look into those things because it's instilling life lessons into our children and it should do the same for us. And we should come as little children and, and look at this, uh, this word and, and really pay attention to it so that we can learn from it, so that we can apply it in our lives and see how it affects how it makes effects, how it makes a change in not only your thinking, but your actions. And that'll keep you in alignment with, you know, with you who is way, uh, keep you on that path. And we have, it's just, it's a struggle out here every to walk in this every single day and to keep the right attitude and, and to understand and what the word's telling us and to be able to apply it properly, you know, especially as uh, new people that haven't been, uh, in this walk long, uh, or, or believing in the, in, in the, in the scriptures, you know, so I would say this is one of the foundational places that we should focus in our efforts on how to walk and live. Because I think that from what I'm seeing, it looks like it, it, it encapsulates basically all of the, uh, the directions given throughout the Torah are, are all like contained right here, at least the majority of them are, so if we, if we take this as a lesson on, okay, how do I apply this in my life and how do I walk this out? You're going to see that that's going to make a change or a shift in your life to um, a, a greater intimacy with Yahuwah, but also a greater rock in your, in your daily lives with your family members, you know, that, and those that are friends that be able to see the, how you're living differently now how you're walking in a different way and believe me you're going to have those that are going to come and tempt you you know from your past i'm sure that are going to see is this a real thing but when you get plugged in and you allow the ruach to, to transform you like he has with other believers your life is not going to be the same and you're going to become that light to those that are looking to you and looking at your life and and seeing, you know, because they hear it. I'm sure they heard it from you before when you got into other things. You know, I know that was with me. You know, what's he getting into now kind of thing, you know. And then as I continue to live it, as I continue to to, 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 to to do these studies and to share with other people and my friends and my family, they are starting to see a great change in who I was as a young man, you know. So I can attest to how these things will affect your life and these these proverbs here are a great learning lesson for anybody that's just starting to walk and in some ways they can be difficult but to understand but in in a basic way they're really not if you look at them what they're saying to you so you know i encourage each one to do that to study it and to try to apply it in your daily lives hallelujah brother stefan shabbat shalom brother wanted to come and thank you for your song this morning and um look forward to hearing some some insight from you brother shabbat shalom oh man <laughs> hallelujah um yeah totally totally yeah um i enjoyed the study I'm still uh, sinking everything in. I actually uh, agreed with, uh, I was 
one mind on accord with uh, Brother JP when he said that um, this kind of study is, it can be used as sort of a study guide when, um, you know, an application for your life and also uh, when you're going through it and you need something like to help you understand your situation as, as well as in prayer. Uh, so that's my, that's my thought process on it. And I'm still letting it sink in. Good, uh, hallelujah, brother. Uh, this, uh, thank you for, you know, your efforts here this morning and what you've already participated in. And, uh, I just want to thank you Hua, for you. You know, you're, it's inspiring to watch young brothers and sisters, you know, coming into this and growing and flourishing so much. And I see that in you and your willingness to, you know, to sing, to, to study, to pray, you know, so I just want to encourage you to continue because it's definitely, uh, inspiring to watch. Hallelujah. Alrighty. I don't see, uh, let's see where we at here. Brother Joseph, I wanted to give a shout to you and sister Francia this morning and get some thoughts from you, brother. What kind of wisdom uh, have you learned from this study this morning? Are you there by chance? There he is. Oh, Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Sister Francia, good morning. Good morning. Um, I just I just wanted to um, point out that something that, that I find very interesting um, with the whole children instruction, that now that we're parents, um, because it recommends basically just to not spare the rod. <laughs> so I, I grew up in a Latino household and, and we know the flying flip-flop <laughs> we 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 when we were disobedient we were not get it and now i see how people are afraid of discipline their children that they are even scared of saying something and i see how the world is moving towards just despising everything that jah recommends us to do and i, I just i just felt that that was uh, that that is often overlooked so I just wanted to point that out that I found really interesting that, I mean, it's not recommended to be violent to, to your kids, but you know, a spank or two <laughs> can spare a lot of foolishness from them. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's a definitely a principle they've gotten away from and they're against, you know, you said something that really sparked the, you know, they, that the world basically is doing things that are against what Yahuwah has said and, and we can see by their failure to follow that instruction, how it has affected the children Absolutely. that we see around. Absolutely, a rebellious generation we have. Yes, isn't it interesting? I mean, that's just one area that you pointed out, but there's so many areas that are in the same kind of category that they go against, they, they are doing the opposite of what Yahuwah's word tells us to do and how we ought to live or how we ought to raise our children. And and you see how it, how it how it affects the the lives of those that go against it you know if they oppose it you see how it affects it and our world's in a complete dismay right now and one of the reasons i believe is this which you just mentioned you know um i know for me uh as a child i'm you know you never are <laughs> thankful for it when you're going through it and uh the spanking that i got they they taught me valuable lessons when i was going through them that i didn't want to do that again you know uh, and I just don't see that today's children, they're getting timeouts and stuff and, you know, disrespecting their parents and stuff. And, you know, and that, and that goes much deeper, of course, but, you know, just those kind of examples, I just see that, you know, the scriptures tell us how to raise our children, how the children ought to, how to live and respect our, their parents and grandparents, you know, the elders and stuff. And that sure is a, a fleeing uh, sentiment these days. So, you know, you as a new parent, you know, I, I, I think that it's going to be an exciting adventure for you, but I would definitely encourage you to follow the instructions of scripture. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, I, I was raised like that and that didn't traumatize me. That didn't make me hate my mother. I, I just respect her because, you know, when she just opened her eyes, I knew that <laughs> what was coming. <laughs> yeah, I understood that, I, that look too. That's yeah. called... And that's a, a healthy fear. That's the fear that we should have towards Yahuwah too. 
a reverent yeah. fear. You know, we know that we are if we are disobedient, we are gonna get in trouble. Right. Right. Well, you know, I think the, the, the problem in this society is that you got people that have taken uh, a punishment for doing something wrong and turned it into an abuse, you know, because their anger that's inside of them and the rage and using instruments, you know, belts or whatever it might be to put instead of your, your hand or something, you know. Yeah, I think that that's where the things went overboard and why people were against it because it was become an abuse, you know. So you know, it's that fine line of not abusing the child, but disciplining them properly so that they understand the errors of the ways. And we got some good parents here <clears throat> to learn lessons from. So as new parents, guess what? You got a couple elders that know how to raise some children that may be able to help along the way too. Yeah, that's good. And the Proverbs also recommend, you know, the counsel. It's wise to, to have counselors. So praise yeah. <laughs> well, praise yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your input this morning. And <clears throat> I'm so thankful for, for your family here with us and your, your contributions to our, our family. Uh, we're definitely part of your family and you're part of our family and we're just a big family. Yes, we are, we are very thankful and grateful for, for all of you too. Well, we love you guys and we cherish and honor you guys. So always lifting you up in prayer and trusting you who is best for you as we do for all. Hallelujah to the Rabbi. Hallelujah. Alrighty, well, anybody, I don't see any hands up. Anybody else got anything they'd like to add to our discussion this morning? Just feel free to, to chime in. If not, we're going to go ahead and conclude this study and this discussion this morning. Going once, going twice. Alrighty, looks like everybody's pretty satisfied this morning with our discussion. So thank you, everybody, for your inputs, and may you will continue to brock in on this uh, Shabbat. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Hallelujah.